The witch's wound, also known as the persecution wound. What is it? Do you have it? And what do you do about it? Well, I'm Michelle. This is Angel Souls. And I'm going to answer that right here. So the witch's wound is termed that for people who believe that at some point in their soul's evolution, they have had a lifetime as a witch where they had been persecuted for their beliefs and their practices. And there is a huge sense of injustice behind it because even though some witches were maybe doing evil practices, there were plenty that were medicine people who, you know, were trying to heal. They were healers or maybe they are a witch, but they meant well and they meant to do good things, right? So mostly it's a persecution of, in large part, a feminine power, it can have that association. Now, along with this and kind of broadening that term would be calling it a persecution wound. So this could be any timeline where your soul is having an existence. It's playing out a story where there is an injustice. You are being accused of something you did not do, or you're being persecuted for something because of someone's viewpoint of it, not that it's actually bad. So that persecution wound, when we open it up, a great example of that would have been, say, when Queen Elizabeth would have been a teenager being persecuted for her religious beliefs, right? The split between the Catholics and the Protestants, that, that's a persecution wound. And that is an imprint that we carry with us. Now, when we come into other incarnations, we can walk in with this and having a general distrust of others. And that could, again, come from various timelines and various situations. But there's always this imprint. It's, it's almost something that becomes or can become a tool in your toolkit. You know, you're the one who's become a little bit more discerning. Maybe you're a little more cautious about sharing with people, sharing who you are, your thoughts, your feelings. And that is that thing that you've learned from that sort of guards you. So that's one way that it can play out for someone. Another way that the witch's wound or the persecution wound could play out, it could come out in anger. This could be someone from a spirituality standpoint who just wants to get back at society in one way or another. Or one wants to speak down on people who they just deem the opposite of them. So this is going in a pretty extreme direction where now you're kind of blaming people who maybe in this realm didn't do anything to you, but they remind you of the people on a soul level that had done something to you, right? So going back to the religious example, if you had been persecuted for being a, pro a Protestant, you, uh, I almost said prostitute. That's another persecution wound. Sorry, Protestants, I didn't mean to make that jumble. I'm so sorry. But if you in some timeline have been persecuted for being a Protestant and it were the Catholics that had come for you, you might have a little thing about Catholics. Uh, I grew up on a street that was filled with Catholics and um, I didn't really know what that meant, but I just knew as soon as I heard the word, even as a kid, I was like, and there was a sense of danger that came with it. Like they were dangerous people. Um, I know that's a whole other discussion, but that could play into it too. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that if you have that persecution wound and we're going to go with this example, that you wouldn't incarnate and become Catholic again in this timeline. Sometimes you're working that out by understanding the other side of it, or maybe it's just a free will choice that you decided to go, or you married somebody who's Catholic. And so you had to become Catholic, whatever the deal is. Okay. So this isn't just this, um, neat little compartmentalized discussion. You know, again, we all have free will. We can come in and do what we will. Now, as far as the witch's wound, here's why I really wanted to talk about this now. Because we're in an era where people are rediscovering those types of talents. Now, I'm not sitting here talking about witchcraft because a lot of people have a lot of different definitions of that. I'm talking about feminine power and, and the healing modalities behind it. And then playing off of the fact that that type of person would have been called a witch back in the 1600s <laughs> in the United States or what would become the United States. So that's that's how I'm using those words. 
Now, the witch's wound, how do you know if you have it? Let's go through some potentials here. You don't like nobody, okay? <laughs> or you <laughs> you like animals more than you like people. Be careful with that because that can also be a sign of a sociopath. I'm not kidding. Look it up, okay? Because they can control the animals. Yeah. Or they're just trying to look like a good person. So just be careful here. You have, speaking of animals, an incredible connection with animals. This does not always have to be a black cat. Although I, I've spoken about this kitty before. I don't know what his actual name is. I just call him Baby Kitty. And he's a black cat. And I love him. Okay, I love him. And he comes and visits me every once in a while. <laughs> but you have animals coming close to you because they're almost communicating with you. You have an ability to see through the BS. People can't lie to you so much. Okay. Now the witch's wound is because you've learned from this. You've learned when someone has, I guess I'm kind of given some clues on that you may have been a witch in another lifetime as well. So there's a little bit of crossover, but the witch's wound part of that is, you know, people couldn't be trusted. So you turn to animals and you already had that deep connection with animals. You've learned to tell when someone is smiling in your face, but is about to stab you in the back, because that's how a lot of you probably in other timelines got persecuted, right? Someone betrayed you, right? Being, you know, betrayal stinks anyway. But if you have a persecution wound or a witch's wound, it's like your whole being gets set on fire. It's just like, not again. Like there's this imminent sense of danger where somebody else might be like, betrayal, that's not right. Ooh, that hurt my feelings. It might feel like the danger of death to you. You're going to have a bigger reaction to it. You don't like societal rules. Not really. This doesn't mean that you're this person who's always on the perimeter of everything or you're the rebel or it doesn't have to look like that you could be going along with society but you're the one in the team meetings going this is such nonsense why do you think you have a right to tell us how to do x y and z you know you have this sort of why are things the way that they are you kind of want to go against the system you can also as far as like emotional hurts and wounding you're gonna feel it so much more and the injustice is trying to play itself out lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. You might also be someone who never fit in in school or even as an adult. Maybe you don't fit in places. You find a hard time maybe connecting with others, again, because of that distrust. You might also be incredibly passionate about justice. And it doesn't have to be legal as, as a matter of fact most of you are not into the legal system at all because you know that is that's not real justice you might not like governmental things too much because you know the injustice this is more of a let people speak their truth don't just jump to conclusions about what you think is going on let people have their side of the story and then you're more like the karmic justice person most likely but let's go a little bit deeper into let people tell their side of the story you might be someone who is going to really stand up for people who are wrongly accused of a crime and maybe even serving time like you might get so passionate about it that you almost go like out of your mind <laughs> like maybe it just consumes you because it's just horrible I'm like that uh, with children or with you know people not being treated fairly especially the most vulnerable people in our society who are being seen in a, a less than human kind of way I lose my mind I can say it I lose my mind <laughs> and I just would scream from the rooftops that's where I lose my composure a little bit uh, so we we do tend to react like that if you have seen this or you've witnessed this in another timeline and you're seeing it play out here it may not be happening to you directly but you're going to have a big response to it so this brings us into another one I know people have spoken about this and I think I think it's good and I want to include it here if you watch a movie about some injustice like I was a kid and I would watch like a stupid cartoon and what was it like uh was it Tom and Jerry I'm like this is like such an injustice why is that cat always after that mouse like 
leave him alone. Like, and then sometimes I was like, uh, the poor cat, like he's never really, he's never going to meet his goal. Cause I don't know. Like it just never happens. Like you just from a very young age, you can see the injustice modeled in a lot of different things uh, and of course you would stand up to bullies or you would be someone who's bullied yourself and that's oh that's kind of a deep imprint from the persecution wound uh, for simplicity's sake I'm just going to call it persecution wound from here on out but you know what I mean right um, you might attract in bullies because part of that carries a victim vibration and I know that's tough to hear but once you've been on the side of that, it does come with fear and you carry the frequency of fear. You can try to hide it. You can do all those things. Yes, you can turn it into strength. And some of the people with a persecution wound, they are the most strongest people. It's the recovered scapegoat, you know, if you want to think about it in those terms. So yes, all that could be occurring. But let's say when you're a little bit younger, you know, if you felt like you were constantly targeted and just for people to be cruel, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You didn't manifest it, all right? But there is something that that energy that's carried on in this other individual is picking up on in you. And people are always looking for power. So if they feel like they can get at you and they can have power over you, they'll take it just for the charge of being in charge, right? So this is why I think a lot of parents unfortunately teach their kids to toughen up like don't look weak don't look emotional because that's going to make you a target that's a whole other discussion that's beyond the scope of this video but you probably would have experienced that this I'm going to be careful in how I say this because this could be incredibly triggering for some people but being targeted for certain energy sacrifice. Now that energy sacrifice comes from youth and certain acts. And we'll leave it at that. Chances are pretty good you've experienced that in your childhood. God forbid. And if you did, I am so sorry. I did too. I love you. You are not damaged. But this happens from a spirituality standpoint. Okay. Uh, and you are restored. You are whole. You are complete ever and always. But this is one of those things because you carry, it's not just, it's, it goes deeper than just carrying the wound. Uh, there was the light you carried that made people be attracted to you and want to figure it out. And if they couldn't figure you out, they wanted to destroy you. Because again, we don't want anything feeling beyond us, beyond our control or bigger than us because it's survival, right? Now that's not excusing horrible behavior, not at all. But I think that's the weird mentality that uh, we as humans, we've carried with us. So you might have gotten the wound by being a carrier of light and someone just putting it simplistically who did, had, didn't have a perception of light or couldn't make light of their own, try to take it from you. That's part of that energy sacrifice. And yes, it plays out in a lot of different ways. This could also be someone who wants to make sure you are not happy. Any of you in a relationship like that? As soon as you start feeling good about yourself, they have to criticize. As soon as you start feeling at home within your heart, someone has to remind you why you're not lovable. That's kind of the treatment that would have come that could have caused that uh, original wounding wherever that originated from what can you do about this number one understanding this and recognizing it is a huge first start now this is not intended for some of you out there who are kind of the darker souls and you come here because you're trying to steal light and i want to make it i want to say this out loud in front of everybody so we're all aware people who use this term to try to make themselves seem special, to get themselves attention, try to take from somebody else, because that's a big thing that happens. Oh, I, I'm so wounded, I'm so wounded, I'm so wounded. Usually when someone does have this type of wound, they're very quiet about it. It's just part of it, not always, but they usually don't talk about it too much. Because if they did, they'd be called crazy. 
And if you're called crazy and you go against societal norms, you remember what happens to you. So usually they're not out there blasting it from the roof, rooftops. I mean, that's more somebody who's trying to adopt that victimhood for themselves so people will fawn over them and feel bad for them. They get a charge by your low emotion. So it does get tricky. It's hard. It's hard to kind of differentiate who really is at a breaking point and yelling for help and who is, just look at the history of that person and that'll tell you, that'll show you enough patterns. So back to what you can do about it. Like I said, recognizing it, recognizing the people around you who are just trying to use that to play victim and just giving yourself gentle reminders. I'm not there anymore. We're going to go into some deep spiritual work here. I'll tell you about what you can do only if you're ready. Some days I'm not ready. Some days I don't want to go into it and look at it. But come back a little bit. <laughs> you can just remind yourself in moments, is this part of my persecution wound? Do I really need to be scared in this moment? Or is, is some old hurt flaring up right now? A lot of times people have gone back and recaptured their practice and renewed it as a sense of gaining that control back. So think about people who have been, I mean, they're the, the biggest examples of persecution, natives of any land. That, that's a huge persecution wound. And so really trying to grasp onto their, their practices and their belief and hold it sacred, you know, preserving that, that's a way of healing. That's a way of restoring the energy to that. Uh, but like I said, a lot of people have gone back to their, their practicing of what once would have been called witchcraft, but maybe by our standards today, it doesn't really fall into that category necessarily. Um, you know, just regaining that sense of control and power. Now from the spirituality standpoint, if you don't know, I go into the Akashic records and I do Akashic records readings and I visit them and get information how that can be helpful, not everybody can access the Akashic Records. Okay. Now, I know I just said something very controversial and somebody who's very egotistical could be clicky clacking on the keyboard being like, who, do you just put yourself above us because you say you can access, but I can't. Like, what makes you spit? Because so, I'm not going to mess with it. Okay. I'm not going to misuse it. If you're a jerk and you've got darkness working through you, you will not access it. You can tell yourself you're accessing it, but you're not allowed in, okay? I mean, what? <laughs> fix it. I, I, I don't know your life. Go fix it. So for the rest of you, <laughs> you can go start practicing a meditation. And first I would recommend doing some sort of breath work, you know, with the counts. You know, maybe it's five in, hold for 10, out for 10. If that's uncomfortable for you, you can do even counts in, even counts out box breathing in for five or whatever you want four or five whatever works for you in for five hold for five out for five hold for five in for five okay you get it so what that's going to do is that's going to calm your nervous system so as you're doing this you're going to feel yourself sort of slipping into it almost feels like you're about to fall asleep but don't fall asleep <laughs> not to fall asleep uh you're really just kind of calming the mind and like i said the nervous system so in that place you can set an intention. Obviously, I do angel work here. So you can say angels and archangels of God's purest love and light. Please take me to the place where I experienced this wounding. Let me see the detail as much as I can handle. Be with me. Bring me back safely and help me to process what I have learned. Shield me and protect me in this process. Thank you. I love you. And so it is. More specifically, if you want to. You can work with Archangel Metatron and you can invite Archangel Metatron of God's purest love and light. I like to put those words around it um, to come on in and guide you and help you. Now, Metatron, as are all the archangels and angels, they're super high frequency. So if you're having a moment where you're like, well, I can't perceive this archangel, it's fine. Okay, don't worry about it. You're going to be great. Even if in this first meditation, you don't go visit the Akashic Records it's fine. You'll still get some bit of messaging through that meditation, whether it's a feeling, a thought, a vision, actual words that you hear. You're going to get some bit of information that's going to help break you open so that every time you practice, 
you'll be able to connect deeper and deeper. And ultimately, you can do a meditation with Archangel Metatron to go into the Akashic Records. Now, you're not going to be able to invade anybody else's records. You can go into your own. Okay, if it, if it had to do with someone else, you might see them in your record. When you go and visit, um, sometimes people see an actual library, <laughs> but you may not. You may not. You may see flashes of light. You may just see a void, but you have all the emotions or a flood of light. You know, it, I've seen like where people, I because I do this for other people, I might go into a vignette, a little scene. It's taking me right in to that timeline. So this is an interesting little practice and you can in fact do this. And you can see, like I said, where that original wound happened. If you start to see the actual end and you start to feel the fear of that, bring the angels back in and they're gonna shield that so you don't experience that all over again. And, and to help you emotionally kind of cleanse, I guess, from a spirituality standpoint to kind of cleanse that away. So that is a, a practice, a couple of things that you can do. Uh, and then as you go on, the more and more you want to see, don't just do this as a game. As soon as you do it as a game, you're not getting any benefit from it because you've disconnected from the purpose of it. And you're not going to have access. Like I said, you have to be pure of heart in order to go in and see this. If you're doing this to spy on people, not only will you be locked out, and it's so funny to me because I've heard like really dark people that are like, I access it. You're such a liar because that is your nature. Your nature is to be delusional and lie. Okay. Like you didn't go in there. No, you don't have the frequency match to be there. So whatever. All right. So don't, <laughs> don't worry about those people. But if you even attempt, like let's say you want to know what somebody else's soul contract is moms out there controlling husbands and controlling boyfriends and controlling girlfriends y'all need to calm down okay you that's insecurity fix it go figure out your stuff okay uh but you thinking that you have a right to dive into someone else's soul is absolutely spiritually unethical and there will be consequences for that i didn't make the rules but it's going to come back at you sure it is and you're going to feel even worse than you did before that is not what this practice is for. Go in with the intent to heal. Now, for some people, uh, they go into this and they see stuff they didn't expect to see, <laughs> right? Or things that maybe they are paying karma for now. I mean, it certainly could be. But this might also help you, like if you were somebody who, you know, Let's bring up Salem, okay? Let's bring up Salem here in the United States. Of course, there were witches all over the world, all over the world. So you may not just go to Salem and please stop saying you were burned at the stake in Salem. They were hanged, unfortunately. Okay, like, let's not cross. I, I, I'm going to cool it right there with this because that's not what this video is about. But anyway, again, it's that attention seeking thing like, oh, I was a victim. But in this other timeline, that gives me an excuse to be as weird as I want. You don't need an excuse to be weird. Okay, you just be weird. Okay, like, don't don't put this extra thing on it. Don't drain our energy like that. Energy vampire. That's a whole other thing. The vampires out there. That's a thing. Okay. 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 Well, I don't know that that's my area of expertise, but we'll leave it for somebody else. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about that. Anyway, what might happen is that you find a newfound love for, you know, practicing aromatherapy or learning what herbs do, apothecary kinds of things. Maybe you find a passion for that again, or you find a reconnection with the earth. A lot of people who do have the witch's wound or the persecution wound, they are the ones that are, you know, they love the earthy things around them. And maybe some of them are actually healing. Some others have come in and this is really the first lifetime that they're experiencing this or exploring this. And let's make this clarification point. Just because you're into witchy stuff in this lifetime doesn't mean you were a witch in other timelines. Knock it off. Okay. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe you were a mermaid. I don't know. Okay. But let's not jump to conclusions. Now, see, if you do the Metatron meditation, 
you can get that question answered. Now I do, I don't want to just like lay this all out there. You can totally do this on your own if that's what you're comfortable with. If you want an Akashic Records reading or you want an angelic message around this topic or any topic that you're trying to deal with right now, of course I do readings. You can go to angelsouls444.com for one of my standard readings or you can get a live session with me. Those are limited, but you can get one of those by emailing me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com and we'll take it from there. So use your dream space, make sure you're clearing before you go to bed because as you do these practices, these healing practices, this could bring up some dreams, okay? Maybe some nightmares. Now the way you're gonna be able to tell that it was just a dream, because maybe you watched a witch show, um, that's different, okay? <laughs> maybe it's unlocking something for you, but the way you're gonna know is when you wake up in the morning, you cannot shake the effects of the dream. So you don't need to remember the details of the dream. Just pay attention to the effect it has on you. If you're thinking about that all day and you feel the emotion behind it, chances are pretty good you traveled to that place. You were there again in spirit. You don't just shake it off when you get out of bed. All right. Now a regular dream usually vanishes pretty quickly and it might stick with you through breakfast like that was a weird dream. Why was I running naked from a tiger? And then I, I jumped into a pond of frogs, like, and it freaked me out. What was that all about? You know, I mean, there is some symbology <laughs> with dreams and you can do that sort of dream interpretation as well. But when we're doing that deep dive into the spiritual practice, especially if you're going into the Akashic Records, that could break open a lot in your soul imprint that's just been hanging there and it hasn't quite become a tool right? It hasn't been a tool of discernment. It hasn't become a tool of finding your voice and standing up for what is right. It, it isn't quite there yet. It, a lot of stuff needs to be sort of cleansed from the energy field. So that could come up in nightmares. I just want to give you that heads up. You do a lot of self-care during this time. If you wake up in the morning, remember this is just a part of that that's trying to come out of you. And if you did have a nightmare, a bit of that has already been released. Okay, if that makes you feel any better about it. But you could also have some really incredible dreams as well. You know, you might go back to a time where you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't feel like I got to fully enjoy how good my life was because someone else's fear overtook me and, and put their free will over mine. And remember the M word where you take someone's, that has deep, deep, deep lasting effects on a soul level especially towards the people who did it. And yes, of course, the people who experienced it. But you might be really sensitive to all of that. You might have dreams where someone's trying to do this to you again. It's okay. It's okay. It's not happening now. There's probably a lot more we could say on this. Leave your comments down below. If this sparked any other curiosities or anything else that you want me to keep talking about on this topic, Leave those comments down below. If I get enough of the same question, I can do a part two. The reason why I don't often do a part two is because I don't get the same questions. <laughs> and I'd be sitting there doing hours and hours and hours of content, answering individual questions. Sometimes that's a personal reading, okay? So we'll leave it there. Let me know. I love you and take care.